Hi guys, welcome back to the React and Golang to do project series. We are now left with these four functions and then we'll be almost complete with our server side code and then we'll test it and then we'll figure out those issues, right? So in this video, my aim is to finish all these four uh, functions. Uh, so let's start with insert one task. So here we'll say collection. Actually before that, uh, we'll have to define what we're going to receive. So the thing that we're receiving um, in insert one task is a task of type models dot to do list. So in your models, you've already defined a struct called to do list, and this is the structure of the data that you're expecting here in this function. And so inserting something into MongoDB is quite straightforward. So we'll just say collection dot insert one. And we'll give it some context. And here you'll just pass the task data that you've just received in this function, which is inside this variable called task. Now the standard practice, you'll capture this in um, a variable called insert result. And you'll also capture the error. So if error is not equal to nil, you'll log out the fatal error. Otherwise, you'll print out inserted a single record. And you'll print out the ID. So the ID will be inside insert result dot inserted id but d is capital so this is how you'll get access to the inserted id and this is what you want to print out to the console now let's work on our undo task undo task basically is when somebody has completed that task and now they want to undo it so that's when you'll use this function so it's going to be straightforward it's going to accept just like task complete it's going to be very similar to task complete here you'll say task and string just like task complete you'll accept task which is string here and again you'll get the id so you'll say object id from hex task And we'll get that in ID. Now again, you'll create the filter and update, just like this. You'll create filter and update. Right. So I can either copy and paste this thing, the whole thing, and then just all we have to change is basically this from true to false. But I'm going to uh, type it out. The reason why I type out stuff and not just copy and paste is because if somebody who is new to GoLang and they're watching my video, I want them to go through every single uh, line on their own. I want them to type it out is because this is the only way to uh, build memory. This is the only way to get used to the syntax. Otherwise, you'll get into a lot of trouble when you have to actually go for a real interview where they take you on a video call and they ask you to write actual code for a real, pro real problem, right? You'll get into a lot of trouble yeah, in those kind of rounds. So always, always type out everything and build memory. So you'll create the filter and you'll create the update part which is bson.m and dollar set bson.m status is false and all you have to do now is collection dot update one context dot background comma filter comma update so we'll pass those two things inside the function and we'll capture it in a variable called result and we'll also capture the error. Perfect. Now we'll check for the error. So we'll say if error not equal to nil, log dot fatal error. And we'll again print out the modified count. So we'll say fmt dot 
print and then modified count comma result dot modified count so we have done these two functions this in this video till now insert one task and undo task and now we'll work on delete one task and then delete all tasks so let's again start with task as string and then the same stuff primitive dot object id from hex task then you'll create the filter again here as well so json dot m so here basically you're finding the task with this id and that's the one that we want to delete okay and all we have to say is collection dot delete one which is a mongodb function and you'll just pass your context dot background comma filter and whatever is returned here you'll capture that in a variable called d and also you'll capture the error and here you'll say if error not equal to nil log dot fatal error and just print out the count of the deleted elements so here we'll say if empty dot print ln deleted document comma d dot deleted count okay so now the last function delete all tasks this just returns a count so we'll say in 64 here and uh, so in mongodb to delete a lot of records together you have to use this function called delete many so that's what we'll use so we'll say collection dot delete many context dot background come on please on dot d i've already explained to you what this means this is basically uh, saying that we are passing an empty query that means uh, we want to delete all of the records in the database okay and here we'll pass nil so we'll capture that in d where d is basically d basically has the count of related elements and here we'll handle the error we'll say if error not equal to nil log dot fatal error and then we'll print out the count so fmt dot print ln deleted document d dot deleted count and we return the count of the deleted values from this function and that's what n64 is all about now we've completed all the functions here but i'm expecting a lot of errors so let's check out those errors let's head over to our terminal and try running this code i'll just increase the size of the font so that you can see it clearly and here you can say cd i'll just head over to the place and my project And now here we'll just try running inside the server obviously or oh, no actually here itself so we can try running uh, main.go and now your main.go firstly i think the problem is that it needs to be inside server firstly so we'll move it inside the server file Alright, and now let's try running it. So we'll have to go inside server and Okay, so it's saying that Golang Reactor Router uh, is not in GoRoot. Okay, makes sense. So 
it's having problem accessing this so we'll have to give it the name of the entire project so we'll have to say github.com slash akhil slash because this project that i've created is not in my uh, go root folder so that's why it's having problem basically accessing this so i'll have to give it an absolute root instead of have, uh, give, having to give it a relative route here i'll say github.com slash akhil slash I think these are the only two places where I had to import the other files from a project. So I can let's try let's try running it again. And here we're getting a lot of errors again. So uh, I'm slightly running out of time. <coughs> I hope you've done these fixes with me, these two fixes at least, and these all these other issues. And I'm sure uh, after even after we fix them, we'll have many more issues. Um, uh, but I'll be tackling them in the next video. Now, the reason why I am so chill about um, creating the uh, like creating the entire code in one go and then sorting out all the issues later on is because GoLang is super super sorted in the sense it'll tell you the exact line, exact issue. You don't have to apply a lot of brains. It, it does like for for JavaScript, you have to be a genius to solve uh, errors. I agree, and that's why I am like I whenever I'm writing writing code, I have a lot of. VS Code um, plugins installed, and I'm always, you know, uh, watching with a hawk's eye while writing code. Uh, you know, if, if there's an if there's an error, I'll be in trouble. But with GoLang, that's not the case. I mean, you don't you don't get into a lot of trouble. So these issues, I'll show you. We'll just solve them in a couple of minutes. But uh, I'll have to tackle them in the next video. So thanks a lot for watching. Thank you for your patience. I'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out. Thank you.